I want to welcome you to this weekly devotional. I want us to think for just a moment that there are many times that we look at change and, and it is something that we willingly accept. It's something that we want. Maybe it's something we have no control about. We live in a, a part of the country where we have weather that's continually on the change. And as much as we may not like the wind or we may not like the hot, hot dry weather and we would like to have rain or we would like to have many of these things, we have no control over that change. But there are times in our lives where we have a great deal of control over the change that is happening in our life. We can make decisions about our work. We can make decisions on how we work, how we accomplish things. But there's a portion of life that as we become a child of God, it comes with change. And sometimes that change is difficult. And sometimes it, it, it makes us wonder what that change looks like. Sometimes it's difficult for us to get a hold of those things. Even after we have been a Christian for a while, sometimes there comes a change in life that, that makes me think differently, makes me act differently. And yet there should be no change in my spiritual self if I am doing what God asks. I want us to listen to a couple of verses or passages out of Romans, the sixth chapter. The first one talks about the first part of this change. He said, what shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him in baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Right here he says there is a change, a vast change, a change from, from uh, the old way to the new way, a change that occurs through a spiritual death. In other words, in dying to sin. He said you can't any longer live in that sin. So effort, it becomes difficult to uh, ascertain what that sin is or what some sin is. We're, we're bombarded with things in the world of people telling us this is all right and that's all right and, and we're doing the Bible's work and we're teaching this, we're teaching that. But yet it is so difficult to understand what is going on sometimes. In verse 15 of chapter 6, he says, What then are we to sin? Because we're not under the law, but under the grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves to the one whom you obeyed, either in either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? He's talking about if, if I'm given over to one, if I have presented myself to anyone as a slave or if I've given myself over to obedience to that one, then that is the one that I should follow. If I've given over my obedience to, to or if I've given myself over to sin, then I will follow that sin and obedience. I'll follow the way it leads me. But he said, if you've given yourself over to God, if you've sought this salvation through Christ's blood, then you've given yourself over to obedience to God, to that which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves to sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching which you were committed. And having been set free from sin, you have become slaves of righteousness. I'm speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawless leading to more lawlessness, now present your members to slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. So how do I know what is right and what's wrong? There is a phrase in this passage that tells us how, as we're making that change, how we're to be obedient to God. But he says something. In verse 17, he says, but thanks be to God that you who were once slaves to sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching 
which you committed, where did their standard of teaching come from? You see, the standard of teaching that these people were given came from the word of God. It is so often that we begin following the standards of teaching of man, of the world, of some athlete, of some movie star, of some organization. We follow the teaching. How do we know the teaching's right? How do we know the teaching that's been given us is as it should be? And he says, You have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching. If we've been taught, if we've been shown the salvation through the teaching of the Word of God, we must go to the Word of God to seek the standard, to know what the standard is, to know what God has said is right and wrong, to know what God's will is, to know what God seeks us to do, and how he seeks us to live. Not by man's standards, not by organization standards, not by, uh, not by a movie star or an athletic standards, but by the standard that God has set. Let's think about that this week as we go about our life, that, that we're not looking at change. We're looking at something that, that never changes. The standard of God is set. That's the way it is. You see, when we become a Christian, once we begin to follow Christ and seek his way and follow the standard that he has set, there is no changing that standard. It's God's standard. We need to stop looking at men. We need to stop listening to things. And as we hear, or maybe we need to start listening to things. And as we hear them, go and check them against the, against the standard that God has set. Don't take a portion of the word and, and let man change it to fit his needs. We need to be looking at the word, going through the whole word, finding the context of that scripture, reading that scripture fully. Striving to understand what it is that God has actually said. But we need to keep in the text. We need to read and figure out what the context, what that setting is. And remain within the standard of God. Seeking to do his will. Seeking to live our life as he wants us. Not as someone. Not as man wants us. Not as an organization wants us. Not as an athlete. But as God wants us. I want you to take this idea this week and when something is said, when you're given a little passage of scripture on Facebook and, and you see it, go in and, and read the whole chapter, maybe, maybe two chapters. Find out why he said what he said and why he seeks for us to be that way and make sure that it fits the standard that God set forth. I want to thank you so much for being here today.